so excited. Okay, everybody, welcome to the Hey Frasier podcast, special edition review with yours truly, Sarah Frazier and Andrea Lopez comedy. Today is a special day because the internet continues to go bananas as we have all been quarantined for a day, I don't know, 10,000 it feels like. Um, but there is one thing saving us on the internet and that is Tiger King documentary on Netflix. And it is so bananas. It is just, AJ, You, I first want your reactions because you finished it most recently. Dan and I watched it last weekend. It came out, uh, what was it, like March um, God, 20th, I think, right around there. So everyone has essentially seen this, but I'll give you the really quick premise. And then AJ, I want all of your thoughts. All right. The very quick premise is the documentary follows three insanely eccentric big cat uh, zoo or sanctuary at razors. Okay. This guy, Doc Antle in Myrtle beach, who is a complete polygamist and also probably runs a cat call like of all these hot women. (laughs) <laughs> it's so weird. I don't know how he finds all these poor, poor, innocent women. Yes. yes. <laughs> then you have Joe Exotic, who's in Oklahoma, who is a gay man with the worst taste you've ever seen, a Fu Manchu, a mullet, 200 big cats. He convinces two straight guys to marry him, probably because they're all doing meth in a bunch of trailers. Uh, yep. And then his business relies on baby cat petting. And then you have Carol Baskin down in Florida with her now third husband, And she is a sanctuary, if you will, where they are trying to save big cats and get rid of people like Doc Antle and Joe Exotic. And then it all unfolds from there. So, AJ, you just finished last night the seven-part series. Tell me what you thought. Well, firstly, I'd like to say (laughs) hello, all you beautiful cats and kittens. It's Carol Baskin down here at Big Cat Rescue. Okay, first and foremost, I've never been so entertained for seven full episodes Once you see one character, they unleash the second character, and then they unleash the third. It is a wild ride. I didn't realize that cat people could be so eccentric. You know, you're thinking these are just really animal-loving people. It actually has nothing to do with the animals. (laughs) The Um, poor... That is really, like, the theme of this at the end, is the poor goddamn cats. Yes, and we finally find out that at the end of it, nobody really cared about the animals. So I hope that this is kind of a eye-awakening moment for a lot of people that have no idea you know PETA has been behind this forever and PETA you know they have their say in this whole thing and apparently they're with Carol Baskin's side even though uh, you're you're questioning Carol you question Carol definitely questioning Carol but if you guys haven't seen it yet I definitely do recommend it is a great watch while you're in quarantine is but it, I do feel bad. Is it? It's, most, well, ter- it's ter- well, you have to be you have to be ready to let your get your heart broken a little bit because there were so many twists and turns you didn't see coming. There is death. There's it's like people describing Game of Thrones, right? It's like oh. there's death, there's war, there's infidelity. You know, there's so many things that make this up. And I think what's the best murder? Is, it's just nuts. Murder for hire. <laughs> the, like the <laughs> the, uh, the documentary. This is the last thing I'll say for my whole overall thoughts. <laughs> Because I could go on, but the guy that uh, made the whole documentary, I mean, he basically says, you know, I went into this thinking I was just going to talk about, you know, big cat sanctuaries. It ended up being a five plus year (laughs) filming. (laughs) Can you imagine you go into this and you're just like, let's get a couple shots of the little bear cubs. Okay. Five plus years later, you're like, what? The actual F just happened. So that gives you a little bit of a glimpse of what's going on. There's so much, but I think the only way to really get it is to fully watch. Uh, Rebecca Chalkin, uh, Chalkin, and um, also Eric Goody, or Good, he, they are the ones that co produce this. And you're right. They set out to do this documentary, and then they got so embedded with all of the characters. And the wild part is, I, it's like all these stories. I didn't even know they existed I had no idea this story was going on. I guess you probably wouldn't unless you were living in Tampa, Florida or that's what, Oklahoma. That's what I thought. Because they're so in the local news. Yeah. Like when Joe Exotic ran, ran for president, how did we not how did we not see at well, least his name pop up? We didn't because he ran for governor. He ran for governor of Oklahoma. He did not win. That was one of the storylines. And the only blip that he kind of made nationally was when John Oliver, who's on HBO, put him on right. uh, as like, because his his campaign commercial was crazy. He was like, I've done drugs. I'm broke as shit. <laughs> you know, I've had four husbands. <laughs> like, I'm like, <laughs> I love Tiger. 
figures and like and that bitch carol baskin i mean it is so crazy when we first started this uh, i have a lot of thoughts on this documentary it is first of all i think it is one of the greatest documentaries not because it's particularly like well shot or any but i think the just the eccentric characters in this make this so damn good and there's so many twists and turns and the fact that you have a character it's almost like did you ever watch the pharmacist too that came out on netflix Story. No, saw that. I think you talked about that too. Yeah, story about the oxycotton like kind of factories yeah. and, and the, son, the his, pill doctors. His son. But the, what made that story unique is the protagonist, the main character in that, had filmed everything in his life. Like had, and, and that is what you see with Joe Exotic. So I think when you have somebody that is willing, that wants almost to be a reality show character so badly, yes. which Joe did, you get so much behind the scenes footage. It is a. It is like a Shakespearean tragedy. I mean, you have everything. I I found it to be really disturbing at the end. And we're going to actually rate the least evil to most evil characters. We put out for our listeners. We wanted to know any unanswered questions. We're going to give those to you. And then since the documentary came out a week ago, all, a lot of the characters are doing interviews. So we're going to tell you where you can find the latest on them, too. So um, I want to get I want to thank a couple of our partners here in a second, but I found it to be almost mind blowing that people like this exist among us. And like, what is America is going on? This is is America. America. And ultimately, for me, it comes down to. And I think this is what the filmmaker said at the end of the day. None of these characters, Carol Baskin, who apparently or allegedly says she runs a sanctuary, Joe Exotic, none of them gave a shit anymore about the animals. This was about making money and bringing down their rivals. And I think that's the saddest part. You have 10,000 big cats in captivity in the United States so these people can have petting zoos or little fake animal zoos or whatever they're doing. And people right up until a couple years ago, because you remember the backlash on Tinder, because a lot of people were posting their yes. Tinder profiles with baby kittens. You know, this has been a big, people were going there and paying $15, $10, whatever, to go have your picture taken with a baby tiger. A lot of people. So ultimately, I think that's the most disturbing. Now to get into the characters. You know, Joe Exotic is the main person because he did film so much of his life. He desperately it. wanted to be, how did, what was your take on Joe? Like, I, I I went, Joe sort of disgusted me that I had empathy for Joe. The scene where I finally had empathy for him was, I think it was like a Thanksgiving and he decided to cook for everybody. And I thought, wow, you know, I feel like he does have some positive traits. He's just so caught up in Carol and exploiting these cats, you know, to try to make himself famous. So what, what was your take on Joe? For me, it was a roller coaster too. I loved him at first because I just love how eccentric and true to himself he was. There is no character like Joe Exotic. You'll never be able to find it. I'm so surprised he didn't get a reality show. I mean, that to me was was right on par with what TLC wants. You know, it's the same thing as like Honey Boo Boo. It's like they got a reality show where you tell me Joe Exotic didn't. I just think it was such a good premise for a show. So I love how true to himself he was. But then, you know, you find out these little things about him when his lover, Travis, you know, tragically passed away. Okay, you Joe said... got married two months after. You did not you see know, that scene coming, huh? So I knew from the beginning they no. never showed Travis. So you knew something happened to Travis. And well, I, I just thought he was an idiot. And Joe was like, keep his ass off camera. He doesn't know shit. Like, that's what I thought. Really? Oh my yeah. God. I knew something terrible was going to happen. Now, I thought he would have died of a drug overdose, but when he killed yeah. himself off camera at at the Joe's Exotic Zoo at the office, I was, uh, that was terrible. Spoiler and, alert. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> everybody's seen it now. Everyone has seen to, it. Yeah. That part for me was like, holy shit. And that poor campaign manager. Oh, poor, <laughs> poor. Okay. I think Joshua? out of all of this. Jo- oh, Joshua Dial. Joshua Josh- Dial. Oh, forever in our hearts. Yes, for him to get the reaction on camera because there was a security camera because, of course, Joe filmed everything. He had a security camera pointing right at Joshua. And I just can't believe that Travis... I think Travis was so high that he forgot which gun he had in his hand. But real really or fake? The, the real or fake. He's like, no, this is a fake gun. It's not even going to go off. Blows his brain. Like, that is, to me, the saddest Oh, my God. So, it, like I said, Joe Exotic gets over that death 
two months after he's already engaged to somebody else. So you start to see this different side of Joe. He's clearly all about the money, but I do think he was a tortured soul. He had a very hard upbringing and he had no real love. His father was like, you're homosexual. I'm not accepting you. So right. he turned to these animals for love. So you get a glimpse of all these people's past and you realize, all right, they're, 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 you know, putting these pets in, in form of some lost love that they didn't have as a child. Okay. But- that scene was absolutely shocking to me. The other scene though, was the, the woman now she wants to be, I think referred to as they, um, she who has her arm oh. eaten off by the tiger. What oh in the my world? God. Are you kidding? This place is such like the whole this whole thing is like a zoo. I swear to God that my parents took me to in like the eighties over in New Hampshire, uh-huh. where you're like, this it's is like so sad for the cats. Rat- Focus. Yeah. Okay. The cat eats off her arm. Then she comes back to work with no malice for Joe and doesn't sue him. And even Joe Exotic's like, I'm done. This is it. I'm done. I'll never be able to recover. And she completely comes I back will to work. Never. I know. I will never financially recover from this <laughs> he incident. Did. He did. She's back five days later talking to the press. I, that is what I, um that is what I so want to know, by the way. Um, because I I'm with you. I think you made a great point. How did he never get a reality show? He had to be so close. Now, the really seedy inside edition um, uh, uh, reporter, what was his name, Rick? Oh, yes, Rick. Oh, no, uh, Rick Kirkham. Yeah, Rick Kirkham. Now, I believe Rick Kirkham was working on pitching that. I don't know why Rick was so embedded with them for so long. I guess he was going to do a documentary. And, of course, you know, the big scene is, do you think Joe killed his own alligator? See, I think he totally did. Blew up his own office, got rid of all the tapes because his seedy, you know, uh, Sal, oh. you know, Saul Goodman attorney there tells him, well, if you get rid of the tapes, there's nothing that he can do. And then the next no, day, the whole 100% tiger. Yeah. 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 The whole alligator house burns flat. Okay. Joe completely did that. Did And my thing is with law enforcement, they knew these people were in town. No one investigated for arson. No one. I, Bro, I mean, those are the laziest law enforcers I've ever seen in my entire life. They're, uh, don't even get me started with the Carol Baskin and the and the and her husband disappearing. You know, they didn't even re- look at the the van when it was on the property. Like, uh, and er, hello. a lot, a lot of illegal shits going down for sure. So much illegal stuff. All right, I want to get into your thoughts on Doc Antle, Carol Baskin, and some of the other secondary players. I do want to thank a couple of our partners. This podcast is totally made possible by you guys frequenting our partners and the amazing people that work with the Hey Fresh podcast. So we want to take a minute and thank them. Uh, we know everything is really tough through COVID nineteen. RNG Insurance is who you need to call because right now you could be saving money on your auto insurance. They have access to dozens of different insurance companies so they could shop you around get the best rate and they're not just in the dc area uh they are thrilled to be sponsoring with and partnering with us david gorman from rng uh, insurance is excited to be our new sponsor you may have seen him we did an ig live just the other week uh and he also wants to use this opportunity with covid19 for you to spend quality time with your family and then also help in and check on your family by doing things like making sure you have your insurance up to date well rng continues to operate through covid19 they are working remotely to keep their set staff safe as well they help people in virginia dc california delaware ohio pennsylvania north carolina tennessee texas west virginia and more. All you need to do is call David to get a quote on that insurance or if you have any other insurance needs 240-283-6701 You can also follow him at David Gorman Insurance on Instagram. AJ, what you got with Best Fiends? Best Fiends are game app that we always are talking to you guys about. Listen I know you're tired of playing board games You've cleaned every crevice of your house. We have. You're bored out of your mind. I know you Check. and Schman have. We are actually Check. removing earwax from each other's ears. That's how bored we are. It's disgusting. It is. That's what we've come to. Like, we're literally scouring each other's bodies for pimples. Like, it's back to best fiends. Oh okay. <laughs> please, please submit that to uh, Dr. Pimple Popper. I know you guys are bored. That's why you need to download this, this five-star rated game app. It's called Best Fiends. It's an interactive, fun way to pass the time and engage in your brain. Enjoy interesting visuals with a gripping storyline. They uh, put out new levels every single month. You will never get bored of this game. You can play puzzles. There's different characters. You collect characters. You can play against your friends. So let me tell you, if you're bored, which I know you are, that's why you need to download the best feats. They always update their levels. Uh, and I always say what level I'm on. I've lost count now. Um, but it is interactive and fun. It's great for traveling. But guess what? You're not traveling anywhere right now. <laughs> that is why you need to engage your brain with fun puzzles and collect tons of cute characters. 
five-star rated mobile app that is on the Apple App Store as well as Google Play. Download for free on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, best fiends. And for those of you listening to us in the D.C. area, Total Dental Care MD is accepting patients for emergency needs. If you've got a toothache, don't wait. Go to TotalDentalCareMD.com. Dr. Mary has been a longtime partner of the Hey Fresh podcast. Tell her the Hey Fresh show sent you. She accepts all insurance anyway. And if you have any questions, you can reach out. They are also on Instagram, Total Dental Care MD. You can follow them, DM them. She's amazing. Make your appointment, TotalDentalCareMD.com. But if you have a child, if your husband, if you are suffering from any dental care issues, even though we're going through coronavirus, don't wait until it manifests into something bigger. They are a state-of-the-art facility. They've taken every precaution as well. They're disinfecting, cleaning all the time, so it is safe for you to go, and they're only seeing a limited amount of patients if you have emergency care needs. TotalDentalCareMD.com. Get them teeth for just done. Uh, there Get is... A podcast by Wondery called Joe Exotic. If you want more detail, that goes into more of Joe's life, including I believe he was a victim of child sexual abuse. Um, so a lot of people, really? yeah, a lot of people finding that out had more empathy for him as he married two straight guys. He convinced two straight men to marry him. Probably the drugs, probably the drugs, or maybe the dick was just that yep. good. I don't know. I highly doubt it. I think it was the meth pipe. Uh, hit that meth pipe too hard hit that meth pipe way too hard uh so i mean joe there's just so many endless strands then you're introduced to doc antle who is joe's really idol if you will that is what joe kind of aspires to be doc antle we find out who is like bargwan it reminds me of wild wild country documentary of bargwan who was their leader Doc Antle as well at Myrtle Beach has decided to have a harem of women who come down, pose in their, you know, get their breasts done. You talk to a woman who was able to escape. And what kills me is who is going to these places? They all get paid nothing, hardly anything. I think at least $100 a week. I would have laughed at his gross ass long ponytail head. I would have been like, are you sure? I'm supposed to clean up tiger dung and you're going to pay me $150 a week. You can take that. To the motherfucking salon and cut Who that ponytail off. Is fucking these people. That's what drives me nuts. Is like you're telling me Doc Antle had the power. Is it the tigers that brought you in? Is it Doc Antle? It, I think he's hideous. I'm sorry. The the ponytail. The uh, the Go-key. massive. Oh God. I just the belly. The belly. You're climbing on top of that. Ah. Oh. When they show him no shirt on and he's taking the elephant for a walk and then he goes into the river. I'm like, what do you think you are, Tarzan? He like goes around the town with this elephant. I'm like, okay, this is not oh god, the legend of Grace joke, sir. You're not. <laughs> the I one not. woman talks about him. They completely lived just like a cult. She had to stay in this room out where yeah. the tigers lived, where cockroaches were going the through their food. She finally gets away from him. It was completely cult-like. She, he's married. No one knows how many wives he has. Eight, nine, ten. They all, they do a montage and no one knows. So this is kind of what inspires <laughs> <My> Joe. <laughs> I love the montage. I love the montage. Then they ask one of the gatekeepers that's at GW Zoo and he goes, I don't fucking care. I don't know. I, love I that don't scene. fucking care. I mean, all right. <laughs> we, and, and I mean, there was once a picture <laughs> that had about 10 wives. There was one picture that actually showed 10 women around Doc. Bhagavan Antle. Bhagavan. That was it. Bhagavan Antle. Bhagavan. And you and I were talking about this. Bhagavan Antle was just on uh, Theo Vaughn's podcast, who we love Theo Vaughn. But I almost think, do I would we even want to interview? I don't even really want to interview Doc Antle. Well, we could really go from the angle of like, we can't stand your ass. So let's just, <laughs> let's just like drill him with questions. Just be like, do you know that you are ugly? Like what's going on there? How did you, is your penis large? Like we can ask him the hard hitting questions and I would not give two Fs. I haven't listened to the interview yet, but I would be curious to see if Theo Vaughn asks any questions. Cause I know. I'm with you. I would say we would 100% come from the women's point of view and say, all right, yeah. asshole, I, Tell us how this isn't a cult because it sure looks like one. But they have now a massive social media following, Doc Antle and his son. Because you've been on his son's uh, Instagram. What is it? Oh, God, you guys. It is so cringeworthy. Oh, so cringeworthy. You... And he looks just like Tarzan. You're right. He's completely he getting just into like that. Tarzan. 
uh, at Myrtle Beach Safari. You guys can find him at Cody Antle. He's verified. Okay, I think he has over two million, but he mostly posts just more uh, lions, tigers. It's unbelievable to me. And you know, he's striking them. He straight up looks like. But it is incredible that he's got apes. He's got well, lions Doc, and tigers, and he's yeah. Doc Antle, I legitimately whether good or bad provided exotic animals to films major hollywood films from um i believe you know jumanji to all kinds of various films also britney spears he did like a britney spears video provided a tiger for that so he you know had some legitimacy with hollywood and obviously they probably weren't asking or inquiring about his you know bevy of women so Let's move on to Carol, and then I want to go through, like, the secondaries. Also, a lot of listeners had comments and things that we can answer questions for them, as well as we will rank the the least evil to most evil characters in this. Carol Baskin. Oh, my God. I mean, there's somebody at first is presented as the hero, trying to do the right thing, right? Then, (laughs) her second husband went missing 20 years ago. Ain't a shred of remains. Honey, we ain't even found a hair, okay? He parked that van supposedly at the airport, and we ain't got a print, you know? So tell me your thoughts on Carol, and do you think Carol murdered her husband? Second husband. For a long time, I did not think she murdered her husband. As we get to the end, I realize all of these people are experienced con artists. They are manipulative. Yes, she I has agree. Manipulated her, her, her husband, have you seen the picture when uh, they're getting married or something and he's on the leash? She has manipulated this poor man into feeding, just worshiping her and supporting her. I think she has a bigger ego than most of them. I think she lies. She has her own cat house. Like, it's not really a sanctuary. I don't know. Like, now she doesn't breed baby cubs, so she has them there. She does not actually breed them. She takes them from the the abusive houses, and then she puts them in her own cages. Also, but they couldn't be put out in the wild, so. Genius fucking marketer. Genius marketer. I genius mean, marketer. They, so they showed, I believe it was her 2018 tax returns for their, you know, 501c or whatever that they have because they're a sanctuary, so they're a nonprofit. For over $4 million in sponsors and money brought in through people coming in. And she's genius. She never pays her employees. Everybody's a volunteer. Everyone. I'm like, bitch, you are, I mean, I I agree. I think the takeaway from this is that's what made me sick at the end of the documentaries. Everybody is a con person. Everyone. From the people that are, you know, taking care of the tigers to the people that supposedly own these zoos to all the different business partners. Ugh, they're, that was what was so discouraging is you can't figure out who's honest in this thing at all. (laughs) <laughs> the only people I liked, I think, were three of the zookeepers for, that worked for Joe Exotic. I think those are the honest people. I agree. They them as. The guy with no legs. The uh, Eric- Love that guy. Oh, I loved him. Yeah, he was really great. Eric Crow. Eric Crow is the blonde one with sunglasses the entire time. Um, okay, okay, clearly he turns to be an alcoholic by the end of it. I think he really loved his job. I think he that was his whole life. You know, they show a scene where he's completely drunk. And looking at the at the pictures of the animals, I think. Yeah. But he overall, he was a good guy. He really did care about the animals. I think. I I do too. Uh, John Ranky, that was the guy with no legs. Uh, and it, that it was Kelsey uh, Saf Safri. She was the one that lost the her one. arm. Uh, lost Rick her Kirkham. Arm. Oh my God, awful human being. You can just tell. He looks like Jack the Ripper. I mean, and um, you know, Joe Exotic. Um, he is an incredible <laughs> character. You know, and I really saw the reality show. You're know, like, you know, and- are you well, sir? <laughs> And also worked with um, Bill O'Reilly, so you know, okay. Um, you know. Now, a lot of people are saying they want to follow up with the guy whose character may have inspired the movie Scarface, which was uh, Mario Tabra, oh. or Tabra, I think it it was, or Tabro. Like, ring in Miami. Yes, he's the one in Miami, drives a Bentley, has like a private exotic collection, never really spoke on camera, Cuban-American gangster, former drug dealer. I agree. I thought he was an interesting character, and he, to me, was the smartest of all because I think he controlled his narrative real quick. Uh, so, uh, I, Yeah, he because he's done his time in jail, and he's like, I'm not going back there. I'm going to sit back with my animals and have make love to my wife. 
Oh, my God. Jeff Lowe. Jeff Lowe, the trashiest human being of all who becomes Ooh. Joe Exotic's business partner. Also, a pet had a pet oh. business in Las Vegas, tried to have a van where they would take around baby tigers and then hot chicks. Ugh. Alan the Glover. Vegas guy? Dude, dude. Oh, and then you're going to tell me that his friend Glover, like, he's a trustworthy person. Um <laughs> I do. The only thing no. I disagree with you on, I actually don't, I don't think that Carol did do it. And I think it's really hard for people. Kim Kardashian even tweeted out if people thought that, that Carol did it. I think it's a pretty big assumption to make. And the, there's a lot of debate now. This is one of the questions we got because Howard Baskin, Carol's husband, just did a very long Facebook video essentially saying and you can see it at big cat rescue defending carol what a wonderful relationship they have how it was really awful what the filmmakers did now the filmmakers essentially say carol and howard knew exactly what they were going to do the storyline yep. changed over five years faux show and they essentially say everybody in this film has very little care for tigers in the wild and really gives more shit about their own ego i believe that part but i think yep. it's hard you know the guy was involved in business down in chile you didn't really know what that was you didn't sketchy you know, sketchy, he, sketchy. On his wife. he had a whole mistress in chile you're right you know he had a mistress in chile he met carol obviously in the side of the road a lot of people think carol was a hooker probably i right you know what, what the I mean, she was that... crying on the side of the road how sketchy is that she's 20 you're gonna tell me that that's not weird none of that story made any sense exactly you're telling me no. he randomly sees a long blonde haired chick crying on the side of the road pulls over they have this insane connection then they go to a hotel and just start living together forever i mean oh oh and then he tells her hold this gun up to my head and if you think it's weird shoot me and she's like okay <laughs> and we ended up in a motel room and the rest is history <laughs> bitch what there's so many things i think I'm sure that the documentary had to cut down because obviously Joe Exotic yeah. and, Do you know, Doc and all these people had so many storylines. But I think it's a stretch to say that she killed him. You know, I don't know. I I could be convinced either way on that. I actually think that it's pretty damning to for people to just put it out there. I know they've gotten it because I, I monitor Big Cat Rescue's Facebook now. And it's so much hate. People are just like, you murdering bitch, you bitch, Carol Baskin. I'm like, okay, okay, um, you know. But I think ultimately Carol benefits from having tigers. So I thought it was yep. sad at the end yep. to see her trying to take Joe down. And unfortunately, I think Joe had a good heart. I just don't think Joe had good people so around him. Yes, I do too. I think he really was like the community leader that yeah. took in all of these these crazy, you know, what, what would you call them? They're just lost souls. Well, they I mean, said basically the island of misfits, you know, these misfit misfits. people out of jail, people that didn't have good parents. You know, Joe tried to get these people to kind of all live together and then come yeah. around. I think the premise was great, but greed obviously impacted it. Joe completely wanted to be famous, which you saw these amazing epic uh, music videos throughout, which were so good. Oh. You were shocked to find out, though, like the Internet, that Joe doesn't actually sing the songs. I was so sad. I thought he produced it right there on the uh, studio, right on his lot. No, Joe never sang any of them. The Clinton Johnson band no. did. Yes. The, Vince Johnson has told TMZ that since the docuseries dropped on Netflix, he's hoping that he'll be inundated with calls and messages uh, from music labels. But so far, no. Just people who want to do interviews. Um, Danny Clinton, who actually sang the songs, the voice behind it, passed away last October from a heart attack. So these guys, for pennies, did those songs for Joe Exotic. They are, But that is not Joe Exotic's voice. Mm -hmm. You're kidding me. Just when this singer is about to get his rise to fame, yeah. he passes. I know. Yes, exactly. Mm. And they well, did those songs your, for uh, Joe for like a couple hundred bucks. And Joe owns the rights, which will now be huge. I know. Can now, what, what was your favorite music video? Was it the one where uh, he gets a lookalike Carol Baskin? Yes. And feeds here, Kitty Kitty was my favorite when he's like, here, Kitty Kitty. And it's it's Carol feeding a, a, a tiger with the yes. tongs. I mean, there's so I, many. I, I, a double take that really looked like Carol. Like, did that not? They got a great Carol Baskin it was impersonator. A perfect Carol. And also, one of the things about this whole thing, too, when Joe Exotic starts selling pizza, but it's the old expired meat from Walmart that he puts on the pieces, you guys. Can we discuss even... his meat, Mark? Did you know that Walmart did this with expired meats? surprised i'm not surprised because i know grocery stores do a lot now they'll donate to a lot of places aa uh you know 
know that AA is like the tiger sanctuary, but they do give, yeah, they do. And fish stores do this too. They'll give you, they'll leave out buckets of fish out back. You can take them and use them in your garden as soil for composting. A lot of companies do that. So I wasn't shocked. I was shocked that Joe Exotic made pizzas and then sliced up the bologna and put it on the pizzas and everyone thought it was delicious. I was like, oh my God. Those pizzas look pretty edible. But uh, I think I would have saved the meat for just the animals, not uh, not anyone who's actually coming to your park. <laughs> this and, this, and these are these are the type of documentaries that then I have empathy for the movie Parasite, when the very wealthy people look down on the uh, people that smell. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know these are the moments I look at these people that come into Joe Exotic Zoo, and I think this is America, and. Olive. And then I think to myself, I am the I'm the dad that gets murdered in Parasite because you look at these you people the like goes, what the oh, fuck? <laughs> yes, yes, because they all come into Joe Exotics. They're all wearing matching stretching, you know, track suits. They're all morbidly obese. They bring their kids in and they don't give a fuck that these tigers were taken from their mom 2 seconds ago and they let their kids play all over them and I think uh uh why? Their living situation is horrid. When they go into what actually they live in, they live in little tiny um, trailers off of the off of the park. And then we go into Joe's room. I mean, he's got a sanctuary little altar, if you will, to Travis. It lights up. He's got I've skins seen, everywhere. Seen. It's, a, it's a travesty. It's the worst decorating from a gay man I've ever seen, ever in my life. Now, supposedly, you know, according to Paul Wharton, who is gay, who's on this podcast a lot, he says that in every region, you know, gay people have different decor. And that was the worst. I can't. I can't. Well, no, he makes so much sense. Like, to these people, he's probably, like, killing it. Like, when he's on the <laughs> Oklahoma float and there's, like, three people in the parade and he's like, yes, yes, thank you. I mean, he's wearing some, like, crazy, I mean, frayed jacket. It's absurd. So <sighs> let's shift gears into how all these characters have now transitioned back into real life. Because obviously the filming of this started, it was for five years, probably started back somewhere in 2013, 2012. Then came up to about 2017, started editing. Now, or 2019, now here we are. It's been released. Okay, first of all, Cardi B says she is going to start a GoFundMe for Joe Exotic. Are we here for this? She's. Did you see this coming? <sighs> Yeah, I did, because she actually, to me, looks like someone that would visit the zoo and would star in a music video with him. So, yes, those two seem like simpatico. I think they're a great couple, 100%. John Finley, the, one of the first husbands with no teeth. Oh. He says he didn't really lose them to meth, just like bad hygiene. Now has a full set of teeth engaged to a woman, was just on David Spade. What do you think of John Finley? Okay. <laughs> John, 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 Johnny John, Boy, John. John, John, John. First off, uh, your tattoos are hideous. He has a tap out tattoo. He's got a property of Joe Exotic on right leading down to his privates. And then he tries to cover it up with a bull head. Okay, poor decisions all around. <laughs> uh, you're, you've got a beautiful set of teeth now. Good for you. Why did you get married to Joe in the first place? I'm so confused. And then ends up banging the secretary of the zoo, gets her pregnant, and then he leaves Joe. It's like... I mean, how do you even tell your kids? Like your kids ask, like, "Hey, what's how did how was your teen years, Dad?" And he's like, "Well, <laughs> I did a lot of meth, uh, had sex with Joe Exotic, <laughs> and then I met your mom." Well, look, I think I everyone people are gender okay. fluid now, so I hope people are not like at all, you know, writing homophobic things on his Facebook. I need to find it. I want John Finley on. Right. He didn't seem overly friendly with David Spade, although I thought he did a very good job. He said to Spade that, you know, he never was really into Travis. They were never really close when Joe wasn't around. Um, but I didn't realize, you know, he he had like a 13 year run with Joe. Like they were pretty in love because he didn't leave the GW Zoo until was it 2017 or 2018? Until late, you're right. Yeah. So by that time, I think Joe had been, the. it was September uh, 2018 where it says that he'd been arrested for the murder for a uh, higher plot. So it's got to be, I think, tw 2017. Yes. So here are some of the questions, too, because this will answer things for people. Uh, a lot of the questions that people said on our Instagram and Facebook. These people are all nuts. It's a redneck train wreck that I didn't know I needed in quarantine life. Um, yes. Also, <laughs> batshit crazy people, but I loved it. Is Carol's husband hiding in Costa Rica, do we think? No, I think he's dead. Well, for a long time, I thought, okay, he just wants to take his millions and leave. But you know what? Carol has all the millions. So did he have saved money in Costa Rica? I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't know either. I mean, I do think it's shady that Carol never gave anything to the daughters. That was kind of sad. Oh, my God. Poor, poor family. The daughters and the mom. I mean, the mom was like, I'm terrified of Carol Baskin. And then they end it like that. How scary is that? I feel for the family. It's hard. left them. They are so deceptive. It's really hard to know what to believe. Uh, People are saying, Style MG says they need to do a spinoff of Mario Turbeau. I agree. I think he was the most interesting character. The guy that was kind of the former drug dealer and then has his I own. I loved it. Oh, he's the yeah. best story. Uh, the craziest person is whoever produced this documentary. I can't imagine even producing <laughs> this. It, I would go nuts. I mean, that's the thing, too. I thought to that myself. That is the truth. I know. I imagine when we, when we were at Alien Stock and we were on there for three days, I was like, I got to get the hell out of here. I got to get the hell out of here. You start to feel like you're one of them. I, I agree. Yeah. They had they didn't go mad. Entertaining, but I thought. Uh, entertaining but taught me a lot about a world I never knew it was really sad I agree I thought ultimately you know cheer was much more uplifting like I said at times I thought okay are they exploiting the cheerleaders but this time oh my god the tigers it's so sad now um people are saying what did we think of Howard Baskin's Facebook response to Tiger King so Howard Baskin I mentioned it did a long message it's still up right now at big cat rescue on their facebook essentially saying you know what kim kardashian did by coming out with her you know 100 million followers and saying do you think carol did it that they've received so much hate and backlash they feel like they were duped and that what a wonderful person carol is my thought is always this you know your husband or spouse is probably always going to do that unless you're divorced they're always going to side with you right and i always think the truth is somewhere in the middle i think you know did did it start out like this was going to be kind of a I think they had said like Blackfin, that that movie um, yes. that was about yes. the killer whales, which I watched a couple of years ago. It was really good. Probably it did start out like that. But then so many other things transcribed. And the truth of the matter is that's a storyline. It is suspicious whether Carol wants to admit it or not. The husband did go missing. His body's never been found. I mean, that is mysterious. So I, I think it's somewhere in the middle. I hate to see him getting death threats because... You know, I mean, who knows? If she didn't do it, it's really fucked up that people are saying that. If she did it, then I think obviously the truth will come out. Karma is a bitch. Karma as Joe Exotic always says. Yeah, that bitch Carol Baskin. Um, and then somebody. Oh my God, his little TV show, his TV show, we go in live at 6 p.m. every night. I said, you know what? Sarah and I, we're going to make it. <laughs> if Joe Exotic's going live, we got this. Um, oh my gosh people are saying they live in tampa near nebraska avenue it's known for prostitution and carol met her first husband when she was taking a walk one night so that is a hilarious meme walk on the side of the road and he circled around three times to ask you what's wrong he's clearly wanting some v because why else would he drive around three times you don't care about your problems so shady uh so let's rank really quick so wrapping up our review here all i wanted to show you too there's so many great memes we could have also done the the ranking of the best memes but who was the really quick who's the uh overweight chucky doll that they describe as he's overweight he was uh the one that was like "Eh." on the jet ski on the jet ski he was such a james garriston Garrettson. 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 So he's such a shady motherfucker he, too. He's the one that, by the way, shady. they're all shady. He's the one that turned in Joe Exotic, became an informant for the FBI. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And then he went to Jeff or uh, Stowe. Yep. There's so many J names. I can't even. Keep he up. went to Jeff Lowe and okay. Alan Glover. Yeah, and started working with them. They all turned against Joe Exotic. Oh, what a storyline. Which is how Exotic got in jail. So a lot of people are loving this latest meme, which involves Post Malone. And people are essentially saying Post Malone 100% would have been Joe Exotic's husband if they'd met. And here it is. Hopefully you can see that. So good. I love that meme. So we ranked the least evil to most evil. And I want to see if you agree, okay? You can argue with me at any point. So least evil, we'll start with the least and we'll go to the most evil. Least evil, Joshua Dial, who was the campaign manager. He was working as a greeter at Walmart, essentially, and then ran Joe Exotic's campaign. <laughs> oh, my God. I have to agree people. with you there. I have to agree. <laughs> yes, he, was, he knew everything about all the guns. He worked at Walmart and then, boom, got his dream job, campaign manager. Oh, Loved it. God, seventh He's least elite, yes. evil, John Finley, the first husband with no teeth. I think poor John misled sweet... Probably has a good soul, just didn't have the right guidance growing up. 
Yes, I think I have to agree with you. Um, okay, so that was number seven. Number six, I'm going to go with Carol Baskin. That could be controversial, wow. but I, I, I actually think Carol is the sixth least evil person. I know. I think Carol is the most sane and probably treats the cats the best, even though she could have fed you know, her first, second husband to one. I think she has the financial wealth to, to take care of the animals correctly. Yes. And I think she has a good relationship with her husband. Yes. Whether or not she kills her husband, we're going to leave that out of the equation. But I think overall right now what she's doing, yes, I think I think she is. Even though she's a hypocrite, she's still keeping the animals in cages. But where else would they go? So, where else would they uh, yeah. go? Okay. Uh, number five, Joe Exotic. Number four, Doc Antle. Number three, this is least evil to most evil. Third, most evil person, James Gerritston, FBI informant, all because he was holding like a monkey, then totally turns on Joe Exotic. Number two, Alan Glover, who was the hitman and looks like a complete, oh my God, terrifying and still works with Jeff Lowe. Like, what zoo would you visit? Eyes, looking into Jeff's eyes oh. and, and Alan's eyes, you're looking into the devil. I yes. swear to you, the I devil's eyes. And I actually, I know a Glover back when I lived in Corning and they look so identical I'm like, I had to text people back in courting. I was like, are they related? Because they look so ugly. But yes, okay. They completely now, I think could I would be. Switch, I think I would switch Joe Antle with Joe, with, um, or Antle with, uh, Doc Antle with Joe. I think I would switch those two just because. Oh, you think Joe's Joe, more evil? Well, I love him so much because he's such an outlandish character, but I, I think he did murder for hire. Like there's proof like, of it. If, if he, yeah, he did do that. I know. Cause now he's trying to get out of jail. He wants a pardon from president Trump. It's like, dude, you did want her dead. I mean, you shot her. You shot a mock doll of her multiple <laughs> times on your television. Like, if I ever see that bitch in person, <laughs> this is what I do to her. Poo, poo. Oh you my want God. my mad I mean, have you ever seen a gay man with so many guns? And number one, most no. evil character was by far Jeff Lowe, who ends up kind of getting the zoo from Joe Exotic, takes all of his money, scams Joe Exotic out of it. Just so, it's so corrupt Speedy. and so messed up. So corrupt. Uh, choked his wife. Then we later find out that she's pregnant. And then he shows us his nanny, who's this hot Hispanic woman. And you're like, okay. Oh. And the girlfriend is like, well, at least he's bilingual and she can teach the baby Spanish. I'm like, Oh, God. Here Are we you go. Are in idiots? <laughs> Another polygamy group. Like, I, it's just crazy. They all fall for this. Oh, so evil. Bro, who are these women? Who are these lost women? We need to have a support group for... <laughs> We're the we're the rescue for the women in the big cat rescue. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We need to help them. Except I don't want any of them living with me. But we can zoom them. You know, let's do a zoom chat and try to get them back on track. But I don't I do not want any how these people so all we'll live buy, together. We'll buy a little sanctuary for them and we'll send them there and we'll visit every day and say, How you doing today? Okay. You don't need a man, sweetie. You don't need a man, sweetie. Uh you guys, we love Tiger King. Leave a comment below. Let us know what you thought, anything you want to add to it. Also, if you love our show, please be Become a member of our Patreon community. You'll get two extra podcast episodes every single month and a video. You can go to patreon.com slash heyfrage for just $5 and then boom, more content. Love you guys so much. Bye, everybody. Bye. Ooh, ooh.